The PBR method is a rendering system that tries to give us the most realistic results as possible based on calculations of the physical properties of light and materials, and that is precisely what their name means, physically based rendering. And it has become very popular in recent years because with this method you can create materials that are consistent with any type of lighting. That means that I can put them in any environment and the material doesn't lose its properties. For example, if I create a material with a specific properties in a day scene, I can identify exactly the same material in the night scene, something that could not be done previously in video games. Currently, there are two types of workflows to create PBR materials, the workflow with the specularity and the workflow with metalness. We are going to talk only about the method with metalness, because it is considered by many artists as the most solid and easier to control if we want to get realistic results. And there are some concepts that we must understand if we want to create or manipulate PBR textures, and they are the following. The first is the color. This is maybe the most comprehensive of the concepts and simply refers to the color that we perceive on the surface of an object. The rays of white light have all the colors of the visual spectrum, and these colors are determined by wavelengths. When the light rays hit the surface of a material, it absorbs several of the waves and reflects others. These reflected waves are those that determine the color that we perceive, and in video games this is determined by a base color map or an albedo map. The second concept is the microsurface. Normally, when a light ray hits the surface of an object, it bounces off at an angle identical to the incident ray. But if we look closely at the surface, practically with a microscope, we could see that this surface can have many imperfections. In that case, the rays of light will bounce off in many different directions, and this determines the specularity of the surface. And here comes the second important concept that is the roughness and the hardness of the surface. The more irregular the surfaces, the rougher the reflections will be, and the more regular, the harder the reflections will be. In video games, this factor is controlled by a roughness map, where the black color determines the hardness and the white the roughness. The third concept is the metalness. As we already said, in the real world, when a light ray hits an object, it bounces off at an angle identical to the incident ray. However, the material surfaces have much more complex dynamics. For example, if we look closely at the non-metallic objects, what really happens is this. The light rays hit the surface, some are reflected and others are absorbed, but other rays penetrate the surface, bounce in the material and come out again in different directions, and this is a phenomenon that we know as the diffusion of the light. On the other hand, the metallic materials only absorb or reflect the light, with no diffusion, therefore the perception of the materials is very different in both cases. The metallic materials tend to be more reflective, while the non-metallic materials tend to be more diffuse. And this is controlled in video games with the metalness factor and the metalness map. In this map, the white color determines the metallic areas and the black the non-metallic areas. And these are the three main concepts of the PBR workflow with metalness. But in addition, there are also other maps that are used in the materials, like the normal map that determines the relief of the surface, the alpha map that determines the transparency, among others. Currently, most of the three programs include this method, but there are some programs specialized in creative PBR textures, like the Quixel Suite, Substance Painter, and Tree Codes. Okay, now that we know the suspects, hands to work and let's get started.